make it uh, last count, Gorda. Taoiseach, at the end of February at Leaders' Questions, I raised the case of Maggie, a 10-year-old child in desperate need of mental health support. Maggie has endured cancer, suffers from depression, anxiety, and self-injurious behaviour. She's in very serious distress. She doesn't leave the house uh, except to go to school. Maggie was on an urgent list for over a year before getting a CAMS uh, meeting. An assessment for intellectual disability followed, but she wasn't accepted into the service because there's no specialist in her area. And now Maggie is in a mental health crisis because she hasn't received the care and support that she so badly needs. Her distraught mother came to the Iraqis yesterday pleading for help for her daughter. She came in February here to make the same plea, but nothing has changed since then. Maggie is still not getting the care for which her mother has fought so hard and for so long. And she's not alone, Taoiseach. Maggie's mother was in the Oireachtas yesterday attending the launch of a report by Families for Reform of CAMS, a group of more than 1,200 families whose children have been denied the services of CAMS or who haven't received sufficient care. The report will be published tomorrow, but the group's presentation laid bare the full-blown emergency in the provision of child and adolescent mental health care. The report describes the dramatic increase in waiting lists with so many children waiting more than a year to be accepted to CAMS. The vast majority say their children deteriorated while waiting. Children with the dual diagnosis of an intellectual disability or autism and mental health or those with ADHD, suicidal ideation or eating disorders are sent from pillar to post in search of support. Many parents report taking their children to the emergency department to receive care and a staggering 69% of those parents surveyed have been forced to seek private care. This places a really unfair and a massive financial burden on parents and many simply can't afford it. One parent who's quoted uh, in the report had this to say, um, it breaks my heart to think what kind of life she, uh, the daughter, could have had if she wasn't thrown on the scrap heap because her parents couldn't afford an earlier diagnosis. Maybe that would have made the difference. We will never know. He shook these children and their families are crying out for help. They spend years knocking on the door of a system that's broken. Vulnerable children fall through ever-widening cracks. Tokurum slanch yam yarak dalani agus the guini oga in erkeim. Kahi an realtis barth fiun taka yein of kundera kerlesh on scannel at all the servishi. Tishuk, I'd like to ask you to directly intervene at this point to ensure that Maggie gets the care she needs. I'd like you to make that commitment to her mother today. I want to ask for meaningful action to fix the broken system. And I think the first step has to be to lift the recruitment embargo so that CAMS teams can be filled and waiting lists tackled with urgency. I want you also to legislate to give the Mental Health Commission the statutory power to regulate CAMS. And finally, can I ask that your colleague, the Minister for Mental Health, meet with Families for Reform of CAMS, study their report, hear their views, and bring about the changes that they are asking for. Well, thanks very much, uh, Laskin Corlin. And I want to thank Deputy MacDonald for raising what is an extremely important issue and one that, that, that I share your view on, that more needs to be done and that we need to make much more progress on. And I want to particularly thank you for raising uh, the case uh, of Maggie and indeed I'd be very happy uh, to make contact with Maggie's uh, mother uh, and indeed to engage in any way uh, in any way that I can. I understand that the Minister for Mental Health has met that group that you've referenced and indeed very happy for further engagements with uh, I think that's families uh, for reform of CAMS and very happy uh, to have that ongoing engagement as I know Minister Butler uh, Minister Butler is as well. Look for people for people watching it at home CAMS 
provides a, obviously a range of services to people, uh, children and adolescents in need of mental health services. And evidence shows that around 2% uh, of children and young people need the support of specialist CAMS multidisciplinary teams. As detailed in the HSE's National Service Plan for this year, uh, CAMS expects to receive about 23,000 uh, referrals over the course of the year. Now, I can point to figures that are true. Uh, that do show we have seen a very significant increase uh, in mental health service funding year on year, and indeed the funding now over 1.3 billion euro uh, in 2024, with a strong focus within that budget for investing uh, in youth mental health, uh, and quite rightly and properly. There are some encouraging signs, though I accept we have a lot more to do in this space. There were 3,583 children. Uh, on CAMS waiting lists in April 2024, far too high, far too many. But that did represent a decrease of 778 uh, compared to the previous year. So there is some signs that as we invest more, uh, as we staff more, and as we reform the services, we are seeing improvements in wait times in relation to CAMS. The data has also shown that around 95% of urgent referrals uh, to child and adolescent mental health services in April were responded to. Uh, within 72 uh, hours as well. And of course, the severity of presenting sy symptoms uh, as well as assessment of risk uh, is always taken into account in terms of, of waiting times with every effort made to prioritise uh, urgent cases so the referrals of young people with high-risk presentations are addressed um, as, soon, as soon as possible. There has been a significant increase in mental health staffing numbers that you've referenced. There's been an increase of 476 in mental health service staffing numbers um, between December 2021 and December 2023. And this year, we also have 68 new posts allocated under budget 2024. And HSE Child and Youth Mental Health Care will have over 130 new posts under the €10 million Euro recently announced uh, by the Minister for Mental Health. My understanding is the HSE is working to recruit for those vacancies uh, as quickly as possible. So I do want people to know that there is funded posts uh, currently that the HSE is endeavouring to fill. Um, so I want to assure you that that's not an issue in relation to embargo or, or recruitment pauses, that there are funded posts that we're currently uh, trying to fill as well. More broadly, we do now have a dedicated National Office for Child and Youth Mental Health uh, within the HSE. This is a very significant development that has been delivered uh, by the Minister because it will provide that leadership, uh, that operational oversight and management of all the service delivery uh, and, and improvements. So can I absolutely assure you this is an issue I'm very happy to work with you on. I'm very happy uh, to do as you request in terms of uh, ensuring that there is direct and ongoing engagement by government with families for reform of CAMS. I'll certainly follow the outcome of that report closely. We will continue to invest more uh, in terms of budget uh, and more in terms of, of staff in our mental health services as well. I should also say from a legislative point of view, because I know you raised points in relation to that, uh, the new mental health uh, bill uh, will be published shortly. And I do think that's a real opportunity for us in this House to work across party to overhaul and update uh, mental health legislation. I look forward to working with deputies on all sides of the House in relation to that. Thank you, Taoiseach. And you're right to say that the Minister met with the uh, families, uh, but that happened in October. Uh, we're now in June, and there has been no progress uh, from their perspective. And they're very disappointed with that fact. I, Every day, every week that these children are on waiting lists or denied services is really, really damaging for them. Damaging in the here and now and damaging to their future prospects. So with the greatest of respect, Thishuk, to tell me that a waiting list of 3,583 is an improvement on a previous scenario is no comfort at all. That's a deeply, deeply unacceptable situation. I raise the issue of staffing with you and the embargo, uh, and you seem to dismiss the, the, the staffing concern, but of course, as you know, the Psychiatric Nurses Association is uh, balloting for strike action, such as their concern in respect of the staffing of services. As a matter of fact, they, they describe mental health services at a critical tipping point, and they raise very specific concerns about CAMS. You've been very slow with the legislative piece, but I want to come back to the embargo. I want, that needs to be lifted. Thank you. The recruitment needs to happen unhindered. 
and the Thank teams you, need Deputy. to be filled if these children are to have any chance of getting the services they need. Thank you, Les so th thanks for raising the issue again, Deputy, but I can assure you the word dismissive or dismissing is something that you can never attach to me or this government when it comes to this issue. This is an issue that I know everybody in this house and everybody in Ireland wants to make more progress on. We have seen a very significant increase in mental health presentations, particularly amongst younger people post-COVID. Uh, not just in Ireland, but internationally. We know the impact that the last number of years have had uh, on our youngest citizens. But what I can say to parents watching in today, and what I can say to young people watching in today, that waiting lists are falling. And everybody that's taken off that list, it, it, isn't, a, it isn't cold comfort. It's actually a real benefit uh, to a young person, to their family, uh, to their community. Staff are being recruited. Um, we can have debates about recruitment levels and workforce planning in the HSE, no problem, happy to do that. But in relation to this, we shouldn't mislead accidentally or otherwise in relation to this, because there are funded posts, 130 additional posts, uh, for the very services you're talking about that will be recruited during the year. The bill that we're bringing forward, the Mental Health Bill, will deal with that issue of oversight of CAMS teams, all 76 of them. So a lot of work underway in this area, a lot of good work, a lot more work to be done, and the government will have ongoing engagement with that advocacy group that you mentioned.